Well, hello everyone, and thank you for tuning in to this information session about our upcoming residential seminar course at the University of Chicago. My name is Tim Murphy, and I serve as the director of the Master of Liberal Arts Program, or MLA, uh, at UChicago. Uh, and the MLA program uh, is hosting this upcoming residential seminar in September. Uh, this September, we're welcoming adult learners to spend a week with us on campus to complete an intensive residency course. The course will be taught by Professor Ken Warren from the English department here at UChicago. Uh, the course title, as you see on your screen here, is The Pivotal Decade, 1970s American Literature and the Rise of Inequality. The course will examine American literature of the 1970s, an era that historian Judith Stein has called the pivotal decade uh, because that decade witnessed political and economic shifts that gave rise to economic inequality that we continue to hear so much about today. We have a short agenda for uh, this session. Um, I'm gonna speak for a few more minutes to cover the basic structure of the residential seminar program. Uh, before we hear from Professor Warren, who will talk about the class, uh, the class itself. <clears throat> so as I mentioned, uh, this course is being run through the Master of Liberal Arts program at UChicago. Uh, the MLA program is housed in UChicago's home of lifelong learning, the Graham School of Continuing Liberal and Professional Studies. Uh, if you're viewing this recording, I suspect you're already familiar with the Graham School, uh, but if you're not, we are the extension unit of UChicago, specializing in lifelong liberal arts education for adults. Uh, we have a variety of programs and courses, uh, and I would encourage you to explore our website to learn more. Our adult students come from a wide spectrum of professional backgrounds and stages of life. Uh, and increasingly in this remote education environment, uh, they come from vastly different geographies. Um, and it's this latter point uh, that became the impetus behind our launching uh, the residential seminar format. <clears throat> Over the last several years, we've attracted students from all across the country uh, and indeed all across the world. Uh, so we created this residential seminar as an opportunity for our distant learners uh, to gather together in person on our beautiful Hyde Park campus. Professor Warren's September course will be the fourth iteration of this residential seminar format. Uh, our prior residential seminars uh, are listed here on your screen, uh, and they welcome students from California, Florida, Boston, New York, uh, the greater Chicagoland area, uh, among other places, uh, for a week of spirited conversation and inquiry. Uh, you'll be in class for five consecutive days, Monday through Friday, uh, two sessions per day. There's a three hour uh, course in the morning, uh, a lunch break, and then three hours again uh, in the afternoon. And in addition to the class time, uh, we also organize uh, social events, including a welcome reception uh, and a group dinner later in the later in the week. Uh, this format has been a big hit among the attendees. Uh, I've pulled together uh, on your screen here uh, two quotes from the prior program's evaluations uh, that I think capture the overall experience well. Uh, but more broadly, the students have reported how much they appreciated the opportunity to experience our stored campus. Uh, how valuable they found in-person connection to be, uh, but also how this intensive week-long format afforded them the opportunity um, to really devote time and attention to the topic at hand without the distractions of, uh, of life, of work, and family obligations. In terms of accommodations for the week, uh, we leave accommodations up to the students to arrange for themselves. Uh, you'll see here on this slide that we recommend staying at uh, The Study, which is a new hotel located right on campus. Uh, alternatively, there are a few campus adjacent hotel options uh, located within the Hyde Park neighborhood on 53rd Street. Uh, but staying in Hyde Park is not a requirement. So for example, our Chicagoland area students are welcome to commute to and from, uh, to and from campus for class each day. Um, and uh, similarly, out of town students uh, are welcome to find accommodations in uh, uh, an area, a neighborhood outside of Hyde Park, uh, and likewise come uh, back and forth to campus each day for uh, for class. Uh, my last slide here will cover the application and pricing. Uh, now, this information is also available on our website, so I can be brief. Uh, while the residential seminar is being run through the MLA program, uh, and MLA students can pursue this course as a uh, uh, for credit. 
Um, this class is also available to other adult learners as a non-credit experience. Uh, non-credit tuition for those students is $29.95. Uh, a deposit of $500 is required within one week uh, of being notified you've been accepted to, um, to join the class. Um, and the remainder of the balance will be due uh, no later than August 28th. Uh, the non-credit application deadline is Tuesday, July 18th, but we do rolling admissions, so you're encouraged to apply early. Uh, and if you look at the application that's available on our website, the non-credit application available on our website, uh, you're, you'll see that it's not terribly involved uh, or overly burdensome. So again, uh, you're encouraged to, uh, to apply early. So with all that out of the way, uh, I'll now turn things over to Professor Kenneth Warren, uh, who will spend a few minutes talking about the topic for this upcoming September residential seminar, uh, the pivotal decade, 1970s American literature, and the rise of inequality. Uh, Professor Warren, sir, the floor is now all yours. Tim, and uh, uh, welcome to everyone um, who's uh, listening. Um, and thank you for your interest in my grammar school seminar on the uh, pivotal decade. I'd like to take the next several minutes to just introduce myself and the course to you so that you'll be, you can see what you will be exploring if you decide to spend a week with us this coming September. I'm a professor in the uh, English department here at the University of Chicago, where I've taught since 1991. My areas of research and teaching have ranged from 19th century American literary realism with a special focus on writers like Henry James and William Dean Howells to mid uh, 20th century American literature where I've written about uh, such figures as Richard Wright, Ralph Ellison, and Anne Petrie. My uh, books have included uh, Black and White Strangers, Race and American Literary Realism, So Black and Blue, Ralph Ellison and the Occasion of Criticism, and What Was African American Literature. I've uh, edited several volumes, including uh, most recently for the uh, Norton Library series, a, um, um, a new edition of Upton Sinclair's uh, The Jungle. Across all my inquiries, I've been interested in the ways that uh, matters of literary form and language have connected with uh, political and social change, particularly how efforts to make American society and political life more democratic and egalitarian have um, intersected with these issues. Uh, it was actually these interests that led uh, me in conjunction with a friend uh, and colleague uh, at the University of Illinois at Chicago, Walter Ben Michaels, with whom I've co-taught on several occasions to develop what was a, a, a initially a PhD seminar called the Pivotal Decade American Literature in the 1970s. Uh, the title of the course, as Tim mentioned, is taken from a remarkable and I think not nearly well known enough book by the late historian Judith Stein, The Pivotal Decade, how the United States traded um, uh, finance, I mean, the factories for finance in the, uh, uh, in the 70s. And let me um, share my screen with, screen with you momentarily here. Okay, sorry, this is, uh, I think we're, did the share, okay, I am screen sharing good. I apologize, I have not, uh, there we go. I think we're, we're good. Yeah, this is just a quick image from uh, um, Judith Stein's book and some of the, uh, some of the acclaim that she um, uh, uh, did receive for that book. Uh, and as you can see from Stein's subtitle and the su uh, subtitle of the course, that although the course highlights the 1970s, its interests are highly contemporary to our moment, which has been defined by the triumph of finance, the dramatic growth and dramatic growth and inequality, financial uh, collapse and resurgence, and some would say a uh, complete capitulation of the cultural and intellectual sectors to the demand, uh, demands of finance capital. Uh, built into this course is a narrative of uh, the decline of labor, working class and unionization as a force capable of uh, directing uh, US and even global economic and social policy. 
The main question that we will explore through cultural texts is why did labor prove unable to resist its more uh, its decline more effectively? Um, some of the questions, let me move forward here. Did that we'll be exploring is did the US labor did US labor uh, fail to recognize sufficiently the uh, capacity of movements like uh, feminism and multiculturalism to offer an oppositional vision to finance capitalism? Or did these social movements by shifting the terrain of engagement from labor, uh, wages and labor policy to culture and equity work to exacerbate divisions within labor that undermine the solidarity necessarily to affect political uh, challenges. And that went too quickly. And thirdly, and this is meant to be somewhat self-reflective, did the absorption of left intellectuals into the academy, say into English departments in particular, lead to an overestimation of the capacity of culture and language to transform um, society? Um, so in many uh, ways, this is going to be a, an opportunity to uh, uh, be very self-reflective about um, how we think culture works uh, in uh, engaging and changing, uh, changing social, uh, social policy. Some of the texts we'll be looking at um, will include a, a, a short, the short story uh, collection from uh, Raymond Carver, uh, one of the sort of architects really of what's you know, been seen as working class realism, where I'm calling from, the uh, much acclaimed uh, writer, Toni Morrison, looking at her first major novel, The Bluest Eye, uh, E.L. Doctorow's um, a novel, uh, Ragtime. We'll spend some time uh, looking at um, and reflecting on Robert Altman's famous film, uh, Nashville. And um, we'll also look at the debate between Judith Stein, whose book, as, as I've said, uh, uh, is, is in any ways responsible to the course, of, or for the course, and her um, conversation with disagreements with another historian of the moment, Jefferson Cowie, his book, Staying Alive, the 1970s and the Last Days of the Working Class, intersects with uh, Stein's argument in some very powerful um, and provocative ways, but also ways that show how, how um, uh, much uh, it is still um, um, a matter of conversation and debate among historians about how to read that moment in relation uh, in relation to our own. And then I will um, uh, uh, ask you to spend a little time looking at some of the uh, issues, as I said, coming from the English department, uh, where uh, cultural and literary theory were very much um, uh, interrelated to and involved with uh, questions of how um, best to uh, challenge dominant structures of American society. And uh, for that purpose, we'll be uh, looking at some excerpts from Frederick Jameson, a major Marxist critic, who um, uh, was really at the forefront of thinking about how social change and matters of language uh, articulated together. <clears throat> and, um, uh, you know, my the colleague that I've mentioned, um, uh, who was pivotal in actually helping me put together this course, Walter Ben Michaels, whose shape of the signifier is in some sense a deep reflection on the role of uh, literary theory in English departments in shaping our views of uh, of, of, of social uh, of so social change. Um, so I'm. Um, uh, looking uh, uh, very much forward to continuing this conversation. It's a conversation that I've been having now for, I would say, half a decade. And, um, and um, I, you know, I welcome you to join me. Thank you very much, Professor Warren. Uh, and thank you all again for tuning in to this information session. Uh, as a reminder, my name is Tim Murphy. My contact information uh, is available on uh, our website, and I encourage anyone to be in touch uh, with any questions uh, about this residential seminar. Um, otherwise, uh, I look forward, along uh, with Professor Warren, very much to welcoming you uh, to campus this September. Uh, so thank you very much, and have a good rest of your day.